I'll try to show you why housing finance is something that we look at, not uh, as um, something uh, beyond our core business, but something that we really need to consider carefully because it is the condition for our markets to grow, especially when we want to uh, address the base of the pyramid. So uh, what I'd like to do in the, in the 10 minutes that I've been given is to show you um, an overview of the, of the program that we've been developing that we, that we call affordable housing within La Forge and that is now present uh, in 18 countries, looking at housing finance, but not only uh, housing finance. Is it going to be my presentation or not? Let's see. And that's Maria. Yeah, basically when it's green, uh, it's, uh, it's me. So, um, I, I, work, so I work in the head office in Paris. I'm in the innovation department, which may not look very uh, important to you, but it is because it means I'm not in the CSR department, meaning that what I do, I try to do it with the perspective of becoming a business. Um, so, yeah, that may not work, so I will, I will tell you next, maybe. It's Apple. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I will give you a sign then. So um, wh what we are trying to do is, uh, uh, is really to uh, address the needs that, we, uh, that are not only at the base of the pyramid, as we uh, call it. Wow, that was not the, uh, the way it should, it should look like, but I guess it's the uh, uh, Macintosh, it's the Apple uh, effect on the presentation. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> What we are trying to look at is not only the, the base of the pyramid in the emerging markets, but also the needs that you can find in developed countries. If I speak about France, there are 4 million people waiting for an affordable housing unit in France. Uh, so that's also a potential market. There is one word which is highlighted. I don't know why, but it's a, it's a, it's a good thing that uh, uh, Apple did that on, on that presentation. It's the word decent. Because building affordable housing is something very easy. Uh, building uh, uh, rooms of uh, 20 square meters uh, for a family of five people is something very easy. Uh, building uh, uh, nice apartments with enough space per person in the city center is a different topic and it's definitely something that we are more uh, looking at. Uh, if you could read the slide, you would see that uh, we are saying that we have two objectives. One which is to transform it into a business, which is something that we managed to succeed in last year. Uh, meaning that we have a business plan on which we report uh, uh, on a monthly basis um, to, the, to the group uh, management. And we also have a target, a social target, which is to impact, to improve the housing conditions of 2 million people by 2020. Uh, and to do that, we are a small team in Paris, and most of the resources are in the 18 countries that, uh, have, uh, that are implementing uh, uh, the project. Uh, to give you some figures, we, so I was mentioning these 18 countries, we, last year in 2013, we generated through these initiatives 2.5 million euros EBDA, and last year we improved the housing conditions of 120,000 people, and interestingly this year we more than doubled these two uh, uh, figures uh, with the growth of the project. So next slide, please. So the way we approach it, we... Uh, which is something that we really put as a principle from the beginning in our initiative, is that there is no one-size-fits-all uh, type of approach. Uh, it's not even at the country that you need to adapt your approach. It's not even at the city. It's at the district level. Uh, I've always been surprised to visit some areas, and I remember one which was in Cape Town, the, the, the slum called Kayelicha. When you visit it, you see that on one side of the slum, you can do think, things because, such as housing microfinance, and there are people doing that because there are land titles available. On the other side uh, of the same slum, because there is a conflict with the municipality, you cannot do anything uh, except maybe some type of slum uh, 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 construction with the municipality. This to say that really it's, it's a local, it's a very local approach that we try to take, meaning that before we launch something, we really have to understand the local dynamics uh, to be able to design the, the, the proper solution. But in our portfolio of projects, we have four different types of, of projects. The first one that I will describe in more details in the next slide, if it works, is housing microfinance with the idea of providing access to small loans to uh, low-income people and technical assistance also to these people. Now, please, uh, let's, stick on the, let's stay on the, on the previous slide. 
The, the three other segments that, that, that we are trying to develop, the, the, another one is what we call earth and cement, which is the idea of developing a new type of construction technology which is based on a mix of cement with soil and sand to produce bricks which have two benefits. First, they don't need to be burnt, so you avoid CO2 emissions. And the second thing is that they are more affordable when you compare them with the existing technologies in the countries where we have launched it. The third type of project that we are developing is what we call slum, or I, I would prefer to call it urban, or uh, urban informal settlement rehabilitation. Uh, the idea is that there are needs for, for concrete, ready mixed concrete in some areas, which are very difficult to access to. So what we have developed is, is instead of having the big trucks that you see in, uh, in the streets of, of many countries, to have ready mixed concrete available in bags that you put on the rickshaws and that you deliver directly on the job site uh, into the slums and the, the concrete plant is built into the slum as well to be able to supply uh, the slum. The fourth type of project that we are developing is what we call mass affordable housing. The idea there is to identify technologies that will industrialize the construction for the developers, knowing that there are many types of developers and many types of projects and there is no uh, uh, single type of technology that we can propose and it has always to be adapted and it's what we do uh, country per country. But what I will uh, focus on with the next uh, minutes I have is really on uh, housing microfinance, so that it can reflect also echo what you what you've been uh, discussing what we've been discussing since this, since, uh, this morning. So, next slide, next again. So, um, one thing to to that, that is key in our approach of housing microfinance is that it's not only about housing finance. Uh, what we have developed for sure is agreements with microfinance institutions and we are developing those agreements. We are in partnership with 25 microfinance banks uh, globally, which is representing 15% uh, of the microfinance sector. We help them to introduce loans for home extension and small constructions, uh, meaning that we have uh, technical partners who can help, them, help us refinance these microfinance banks. So last year we we closed the deal with the French Development Agency to refinance a microfinance bank in Nigeria so that they can start proposing uh, uh, loans for home extension in uh, Nigeria. And we also provide these banks access to trainers, to, to technical partners who can help them on designing uh, a credit product, which is for sure something that we don't know how to do within Lafarge, and we concentrate on the uh, other aspects. That is why also we we recently launched with the UN Habitat and the World Bank a training program that we call the Housing Microfinance Academy to train microfinance banks on how to design uh, and, and get refinance for housing products. So that is uh, the financing part of, of the, of the uh, value proposition, but there is much more than only finance. The thing that we provide uh, uh, to the borrowers of, this of these uh, institutions is construction technical assistance. What is really needed is not only finance, it's also uh, the preparation of the drawings of the bill of quantities because low-income people usually they don't know how to uh, build, they don't know how to price, how to value their project, and this is something that we develop with special teams that we have appointed and staffed in the countries where we are doing housing finance, and we visit customers one by one to be able to prepare these uh, bill of quantities and drawings. Also, what we have uh, put in our uh, value proposition is uh, new materials. I, I mentioned one, which is this new type of soil-stabilized uh, <coughs> brick, but uh, I could give you many other examples of new types of roofing solutions or blocks or walling systems that we uh, are proposing so that we make these projects more affordable. The fourth thing that we uh, are putting in our value proposition is the access to retailers. That may uh, look very basic, but indeed this is also where there is a lot of things to, 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 to build, uh, because uh, usually what happens with uh, microfinance is that people receive uh, the, the loan in cash, and they can use that bigger amount of money for any type of project that they have, uh, like wedding or whatever they want, and, and, and that may become a problem. So. The, the, the reason why we partner with these retailers is that the, when we partner with them, the money from the microfinance bank is directly transferred to these retailers, meaning that there is no cash given in the hands of the low-income people. 
and also for us, that is a way, because these retailers are where our cement products are sold, this is a way to grow the, 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 the business of these retailers, and this is why, how we uh, are also uh, uh, building a business uh, with this approach. So maybe next slide, please. So this is, these are examples of some projects that, that were taken in 2013 in uh, uh, Indonesia. To give you a sense of the number of houses that we are building, in a month, through, with all the, the microfinance projects that we have, we contribute to 1,000 loans, which, have been, which are generated by our uh, microfinance partners. In some countries, such as uh, Nigeria, it means 150 houses. Um, you, Graham, you mentioned uh, this morning Zambia. In Zambia, it's 120 houses every month which are being uh, financed through this uh, mechanism. So it is definitely not uh, as big as we would like it to be, but it takes time. And what we noticed in some countries is, is that it can become uh, nationwide. It can reach a scale. Uh, in the Philippines, we are uh, above 400 loans per month with only one partner and adding more partners to be able to cover the entire country. So uh, this is what we, uh, to, to, to respect the time that have been given, I will not go into the details of the other type of projects, but this is to say that uh, there are ways to involve the private sector, um, maybe not by having it uh, in its traditional role as you may be expecting from the private sector, uh, what we've tried to develop is really to build uh, on the long term an ecosystem, uh, as you like to, see, to say, and I fully agree, that it is not only about uh, having one partner, it's really about building an ecosystem, finance people, uh, we are not becoming a bank, but we bring people who know how to provide uh, uh, financial solutions. We uh, are not uh, going to enter the retail business, but we, we bring our partner retailers and so on and so forth. There is the way to, to do it is really by not only selling cement, but by cementing the partners that, that we bring uh, uh, to be able to, uh, to really build something in which each of the actors, each of the stakeholders will find its interest. If uh, we don't find this win-win uh, solution for all the partners in the ecosystem, that will not be uh, scalable and is really what uh, we look at building some things that are uh, scalable in, in the countries. Mm -hmm.